everyone and welcome back to my channel. This video sort of goes with a video uh, that I just finished filming on how to stitch your letters, how I stitch my letters, how I use two strands using backstitch. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how I completed this, please feel free to check out my channel, the rest of my videos, you should be able to see it there. This video, however, is focusing still with these patterns. Uh, again, a friendly reminder to drink your water and take your meds. These are the two patterns. They are available in my Etsy shop. I will link them in the description. Also have videos in my channel on how I transfer patterns, hence why they're cut like this and how I transfer them. So please feel free to watch those if you're a beginner or if you're new to this channel. But those are the patterns and the designs. So we're going to put the drink your water one aside for now um, and focus on actually you know what maybe we will go drink your water I kind of feel like a little blue or do I feel like red no we'll leave this one aside I already used that one so drink your water is being put aside I'm going to start on the take your meds I also explained in the previous video about lettering why my some of my letters are just with dots so please watch that to clear any confusion but essentially it's just where I make straight stitches so nothing too crazy there we're going to focus on how I do, we're not going to do the whole thing because it's pretty repetitive. Most of this is lazy daisies. I'll do one or two of the flowers and then I'll do a section of stem because again, it is the same thing. So a lazy daisy is something that I've just used in a handful of patterns. I do like throwing it in every so often. It's, it's just something different than just my satin stitch, back stitch, and... Um, French knots, which I love all of those and use them in pretty much every pattern. So I'm going to use this color. Again, the pattern will be available where you'll get all the colors and all the stitches and the two patterns. Um, they'll be available in my Etsy shop once this video is up. For now, I'm just going to use this really dark green. I don't know if it looks dark green or black to you guys, but it is a dark green. So I'm going to pull some out and use this for the uh, I don't know, stem, vine, whatever you'd like to refer to it as. So this is not the Lazy Daisy. So when I do my stems or branches or leaf details in my pieces, I always use two strands. When I'm doing the Lazy Daisy, I'm going to use three strands. So again, this is just for the stem. Oh, I should have my needle minder on the stitch. You know what? I'll put it on this one. If you don't know what a needle minder is, they're just usually a little decorative piece of metal, enamel pin, acrylic, uh, wood. There's so many different things it can be. It has a magnet on the back, and then it has a magnet that you put on the underside of your stitch like this. And it, it's stuck on there. And once you have your needle and your thread, just so that when you get up to get a drink, use the washroom, tend to your children or your pets, you need to stretch your legs, whatever. Basically, whenever you're putting your stitch down, it holds your needle. So that's what this thing is, in case you're just wondering. Whenever I'm working, I work a lot on my, on my bed, on a couch, on a chair, with blankets, soft, soft material. I don't need to be finding this later, so I'm very anal about keeping tabs on it because I also have two cats and a dog, and I don't want them finding it. So anyway, if you don't have a needle minder, I do recommend it. You do not need it. You can also just put your needle through the fabric like that when you're not using it or have a pin cushion. Some people have bracelet ones that magnetize as well. So anyway, that's all that is. It's not a part of the design. So when it comes to the stems, let's pick this one. So this part here is what I'm going to be doing right now. Just the middle part by doing back stitch, back stitch and a bit of straight stitch, I guess. Basically, I'm just, just winging it, doing it however I want. Normally, I would do a back stitch here, come up here and go back in the same hole. You can do that. I'll do it down here. But when I'm doing Lazy Daisy, I tend to like 
leave a bit of a gap because I know there's going to be a few stitches going in there. So I'll do it on this one. Either way is fine. Just whatever works better for you. So I have left like a smidge of a gap in there, which again, normally I would not. And I'm just going to do one full stitch up. You can sometimes do these kinds of patterns really quick. They're good for a homemade gift for someone, for yourself, a little weekend project. But as you can see, I'm already done that. So it's this pattern. I can tell the two of them together. If you've stitched before, you could definitely do this in a day. And especially when you see how quick the lazy daisy is. So I'm tying this off. Put this thread aside because I'll use it again for another stem. So we've just done this section only. That's it on the back. And now I'm going to pick mm -hmm, two colors. You know what? I'm going to do those two. So in my mind, these are kind of like leaves, whereas these are more the floral elements. Again, I design them, I draw them, I transfer them, and then I pick colors as I work. So you're kind of seeing this one get made in real time, real life decision, real time decision, sorry, of what colors go where. It's a pretty important part of the pattern making process is... Picking colors that go, picking colors that go close to each other, <laughs> and yeah, where your placement for them. So now I'm doing a lazy daisy. I'm going to use three strands. So I separate the floss into two separate parts, three and three. I'm going to set one aside because I will use it later. And again, I do this really quickly. Don't be intimidated. It looks confusing on video, but it's just because I've been doing this for seven, eight years. Uh, in one of my beginner videos, I do explain... How to nicely calmly and slowly separate your threads so if you're a beginner or feeling overwhelmed by my speed at some points please don't be and just feel free to go watch those earlier beginner videos so here's the lazy daisy let me just readjust oh. okay so a lazy daisy is named lazy because it's pretty quick I could choose to go around this leaf with a few back stitches. I could choose to fill it in with a satin stitch. Uh, there's a bunch of other stitches that you could choose to do. But a lazy daisy, essentially, I go up through the one hole. I'm going to move that. That's confusing visually. Okay, I come up through that hole. I go back right next to it. I'm not going back in the same hole, to be honest. I just figured out how to do Lazy Daisy myself. I'm not sure if they professionals would recommend that you go through the same hole. I would assume not. But literally just right next to it. Pull it through, but not all of the way. Then I'm going up to the part here on my drawing at the tip. Again, this is heat erasable pen. So if I don't go exactly on it, it's going to be fine. Pull through. Don't pull too tight or too fast. And you get a little thing that looks like that. And then I just go on the other side and do like a little secure stitch. And that's it. It is so quick. And it's just something different. I really am growing to really like Lazy Daisy at the right, you know, the right place at the right time. I don't just want to start throwing them into my patterns, but it's a, it's a fairly easy one. So again, don't pull at this point or else you're going to make it go. I'll pull. See how it went really straight? It went really no shape to it. I kind of want it to be, have a little bit of like life to it. A little bit of volume. in I should say out and now back in so again not pulling it tight going through to the tip of your drawing you can see it better that way sorry I'm trying to catch the light so that's my needle I'm coming in on the tip of this leaf or petal 
pulling gently till it's all the way through and then putting a little stitch up top again don't pull too much and that's it that's exactly what I want like it's like a three-dimensional little leaf but it's attached I might get snagged easier on like rings or something on your hand so just be cautious with a lazy daisy stitch so you want it to basically fall like I wouldn't want to stitch it like this because it's gonna be all twisty so I'm trying to and thread gets twisted easily after a few stitches so that's the flat way do you see what I'm doing there so kind of flatten it out straighten it out because this bottom one I definitely didn't and it's wonky you can tell so it's naturally twisted back again so I'm gonna pull it through sorry I have to put this down on my knee I'm making this look more complicated because I have to do it at a certain angle to show you guys it's not that tricky there we go oh my gosh oh my gosh guys we all do stuff like this don't feel like a loser we all do it <laughs> I've been stitching for years it still happens so let me sort this out here okay there we go no harm done so that stitch kind of got pulled through and I'm I'm over trying to fix that so we'll just do one right on top that's the beauty with embroidery it's like only you're going to know that you, I did that. Day. Well, you guys are all going to know because you watched me. But only you know you make mistakes in certain places. And you think, oh my gosh, I have to fix this. Or they'll notice it's not perfect. And no one's going to notice. Like it's just, it's just you that knows. So don't sweat the small stuff. And that's it. Now, something else I sometimes do to my Lazy Daisy Stitch is... Just to help give it more shape and volume. I do the regular stitch. And then say I wanted it just to be a little wider. I add like another little stitch on the side. And I go back through the exact same hole for these top stitches. So down here, I leave a bit of a gap. But when it comes to this one, I try to go back through the same hole or again, right next to it. So in this case, I'm going to go back through the same hole. And it make sure you have all three strands. And then don't pull too tight. And it, it's just going to give it that extra shape. So you will see that little like stitch bumpy there that I just did right there but I like it it helps you have control over the shape because sometimes with a lazy daisy stitch we don't get that control there you go last one on the top and then I'll do a flower basically the same thing just in a certain shape how is this gonna lay it's gonna lay like that so again try not to have them tangled or twisted because they won't lay flat so I don't like how skinny this top one is I'm going to add a little stitch to either side To give it the shape I want. That's also why we don't pull hard on the first stitch. Otherwise you won't have any slack to play with to do that. If that's this is something you want to do. If you want to add these extra 
bumpies to help shape them. So that's a lazy daisy. That's it. Then you just, oops, sorry, needle and mouth. Um, you just tie it off as usual on the back. Again, don't pull too hard up. But don't leave it loose, like it will get all poked if you don't pull too tight. And oh, I didn't use that color. Um, I'm going to do a big red one. Cat hair. Okay, so same prep. And we're going to pull this into two sections of three. And then when doing the flower, there's no stem, obviously, to work off of like I had in this one. So the only thing that's kind of stressful about doing a flower for me is this knot. I kind of have to start in the middle. That means that I have to work around this knot every single stitch. So don't do too big of a knot and just be aware that it's there. That's all I can kind of recommend. So you can see I have to come up the middle. So now the knot is going to be in the center of that flower. So just be careful with each daisy stitch. So this is going to be six separate lazy daisies. So I'm going to go right next to that. Sometimes it helps to do this just to keep it from tangling. Put your thumb or your finger in there carefully. So then we're going to come up through there. Stitch it down and then repeat over and over six times. Again, remember that knot is there. When you're done your lazy daisy, you can even leave some, some space in between in the center and then do a French knot at the end. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing here just to like hide any, any gaps with a different color. I won't do that right now because I don't want to pick the wrong color. Oh, and see this one didn't sit very well. I want it to be wider, so I'm going to do an extra little stitch to help shape it. Oh. That's so annoying. I hate when that happens. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. I like that a lot more. And that's it. So yeah, a flower, a petal, little decorative uh, accents. There's you if you Google lazy daisy usage, you'll see some more ideas. Um, for me, I just like having it as like, like I said, something different, kind of a quick little stitch. And I like how it looks in the end. So I'm going to stop it after this one. And if you wait a moment, you will see the finished products. I will have a photo of them at the end of this video, along with some quick footage. And you can see the lazy daisies up and close. So if you have any questions, um, any comments, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section. You can reach out to me on Etsy, Instagram. I usually do reply fairly quickly. Again, these patterns will be together in a bundle and they will be available in my Etsy shop when this video is out. I will leave the link in the description. And for now, hopefully that helped. Thank you so much for watching. If you tackle these, let me know how it goes and happy stitching. Thanks guys. Bye.